Hi there, my name is Mark Jeffrey with Glossy.com. I'm going to assume by now you know what a Glossy is, and I'm going to answer some of the commonly asked questions about how to embed a Glossy, and also how the Glossy editor works. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is embed a Glossy, and, and this is something you can do with any Glossy, of course, including one that you author and publish. Uh, glossy must be published before it can be embedded, uh, but once it is published, it may be embedded on your blog, um, and of course, you can also push it out to places like Facebook, although you can't embed it in Facebook, but I'm going to show you what you can do in just one moment. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Harry Potter Glossy right now, uh, open it up, and uh, as it's loading uh, in one moment, Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, the Pages dialog here, uh, which enables me to zoom right to the back uh, or to any page in the Glossy. I'm going to click on the last page, and again, this is the last page of the Glossy, the back, the back cover, if you will. Um, you can see there's a lot of different things here, some like buttons, tweet, pin it, etc. But there's also this embed area. I'm going to click on that, and much like YouTube or several sites that allow you to embed players on their sites, uh, their blog or whatever, there is an embed code, embed HTML. Simply cut and paste this into your clipboard and then go to your blog and paste it in as HTML. Remember, it has to be HTML. But once you do that, uh, this glossy is now embedded in your site. Now, I've actually already gone and done that with a different glossy. This is my website. Um, I run an author site, and I wanted to embed a glossy that I had made. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to show you. There's nothing on my sleeve here. This is just a regular, this is a Squarespace blog. Um, very simple, really great blogging system, by the way. Um, but this will work with any major blogging system out there um, with, without any trouble. So this is an entry, and I, you can see I've entered a little text in here. And here is the embedded Max Quick Glossy. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit more so you can see that. So as you can see, it's in a little player, uh, branded Glossy, where you can view it, create your own. Um, of course, there's a view button here, so I'm going to click on that. Now, notice what happens when it opens, when it loads up. It doesn't actually leave the blog. It stays on the site. So I've just got a little uh, overlay on top of my own website. Um, but it works exactly like a Glossy on Glossy.com. It's just that it's embedded on your site. Um, so I can flip through it like I normally would. There's absolutely nothing different about this whatsoever. This is the exact same Glossy. I can even tweet and like and do all the things I can normally do from Glossy right from here. So I'm going to close that out and prove to you that, once again, we're back on our site. It's very, very similar. Uh, it's very, very, I mean, it is actually a blog. It's not similar to a blog. Um, so now, into the actual uh, Glossy editor. I'm going to show you a few things that you may not be aware of. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Create a Glossy. I can do it either from here or from here. Uh, I'm just going to select it from here. And the Glossy Editor opens up, and at first it opens up with absolutely nothing in it. It's totally empty. Um, and over here on the left, these are the pages. We start you off with a few pages. Um, if you click on any of these, they're actually thumbnails on the page. you notice over here in the canvas area, the canvas area changes to allow you to directly edit whatever page you're working on. So first I'm going to work on my, on my title here, or sorry, my cover. And the title, of course. Um, and these are these are clippings, and clippings are the media that you have uploaded previously, um, which I'm not going to actually cover here. But just to, you can use this upload button here to upload this media. Um, typically, it's images right now. Um, but these are the images that you would have uploaded previously. And of course, anything you have in your clippings, you can just drag and drop onto any area of the screen that's enabled for images. Um, on the cover, of course, the entire area is enabled for images. And then you have these four text, box here, text boxes here, um, which enable you to enter a title and do something. So I'm going to show you some of the basics of how to use this. Um, so when you, when you click in here, um, basically you can change some of the characteristics of the, the fonts, uh, this, the, the actual font that you're using. So I'm just going to actually change this to Bevis New. Uh, I'm going to change the font size a little bit. I'm going to go up to maybe 44. Oh, I guess that's down. I'm going to go up to 44. Or, sorry, up to, uh, how about 60? No, it's still not tipping. Let me try one more. Um, so let's go up to maybe 84. So that's a fairly large font. Now, if I want to center it, these this works exactly like a word processor. A line center. Now it's a line center really nicely. Um, let's say I want to space out the letter spacing a little bit. I can go over here and maybe increase it to 5 pixels. So now, as you can see, it's actually you know the line between the area between the letters itself has expanded quite a bit. If you want to change the color, simply click here, and this changes. This is where you change the text color. I'm actually going to change it to white to make it a little bit more visible. But as you can see, it's still a little bit hard to read down here. It gets lost in the clouds a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go up here to the dark background opacity area. I'm going to click dark. That enables that puts kind of like a sunglass lens underneath it. 
but really what it makes it do, what it makes happen is it makes the text pop out a little bit from the area in the background. It's really useful for when the photograph that you're on top of, there's a lot of wide range of color variation as there is obviously when you're looking through a very darkened doorway out into a very spacious lighted area. Now this area is not it's really got a lot of wasted space here and it doesn't look very good. So this is something that's not particularly obvious, but you can actually move and drag these text areas around. I can even drag it down here over the other text areas if I want to. Um, of course, I probably don't want to do that. And the other thing you can do is you can actually resize it. So now I'm going to resize it like this. I can resize it horizontally, vertically. You just do it by grabbing this little corner here. And you notice as I, as I resize it, it kind of squishes up a little bit. You now if I make it large enough, it pops into you know a, a double double worded area. Um, but it's really nice to be able to resize this area. It's just delightful for, you know, if you want to do something a little bit funky, like put it down here. Um, so it's really great. You can actually take this one and move it up on top, which I'm just going to do for the purposes of illustration. Then I'm going to make the text color here. Let's see, I'm going to make this, I'll just make it red for a little variation. Um, and actually, if I want to, I can put a little uh, white lens background area underneath it. Um, it's kind of an ugly color, so just <laughs> for purposes of illustration only. Um, but notice also how you know it's kind of you know right up against the edge here, which makes it a little bit hard to see. What I can do is I can go here and click on my Add Padding to Text area. Now watch what happens to the text when I do that. Whoops! Boom! There, look at that. It added a nice little padding around the text. Didn't quite do it. Didn't quite get there on the on the bottom part. So I'm actually going to go in there and stretch it out just a little bit so the padding is equally applied all around. The nice thing is, is that you know it's not right up against the edge there. So um, now let's say I want to actually uh, make all the text line up really nicely. Oh, actually, there's not enough text here to do that. So I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit later on. Um, but you know, if I there's a lot of different ways I can actually make this text look a little bit nicer with colors and fonts and all that stuff. It works exactly like you know your normal word processor. If I want to make it italic, um, you know, etc. If I actually want to change the background uh, of the font of the actual letters itself, I can do that from here. So let's say I want to make them all black. Now I've just I've already done it, and when I take it off, you can see that the background of the letters. I mean, it all depends on the, on the font size, how this actually turns out. Sometimes it looks great, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you can sort of fiddle around with that and, and get some different effects. Now, when I'm done with that page, all I have to do is I can either click Save, which will save it, or I can just sort of click into another page and start editing it, and the thing is smart enough that it will actually just save the page that I just uh, was on. So you won't lose your work. So you don't have to really worry too much about that. And when it's done saving the page, you'll see a little thumbnail pop up here of the page, just like that. So now you can see the cover, uh, you know, sort of a thumbnail of what it'll look like. Um, now, let's say this page here, I, I don't really need it. I, you know, I've just, I just really have no use for it. I can delete it. It's really easy to delete pages. Just simply hover over them. You'll see a little X appear, just like in many applications. Hit, just click it. It asks you if you're sure, of course, just to make sure you're not blowing away something you actually really wanted. And boom, it's been deleted. Um, and actually, you know, I, I think I'm probably going to delete this one as well. So I'm just going to make a really quick two-page glossy to show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to delete this page as well. Hit delete. Away it goes. Now this page here, I'm going to show you some interesting things you can do with the text. That's a little nice. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to add like a really complex background image. So that's a really sort of noisy one in terms of color. And notice again, I can just grab and drag this text area around. Maybe I don't want it to be nice and long and skinny. Maybe I want to, maybe I want to sort of push this up a little bit and make it you know, sort of above the kids, sort of floating above them like that. So first thing I want to do is I want to make everything, you know, whoops, I want to make everything a little bit legible, so I'm going to drag that back there. Um, and by the way, if I click on the image, the image can be resized too, just with this image slider right here. And of course, I can also grab the image and move it around as well and sort of adjust it, you know, exactly the way I want it. So I'm just going to put it right there. Um, I'm clicking in the text box again, um, highlight the text so I can change the color. So I'm going to go up here and and make it a nice legible white. I'm going to do the same trick I did last time. I put a little dark lens underneath it um, and also put a little spacer in there. Now here's the cool thing. Notice this little ragged edge over here, how the, the text is sort of like la 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 like that. Um, it doesn't really look professional. It doesn't really look as nice as it could. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a line full. What that will do is it'll line everything up really nice. So I'm just going to unselect it and reselect it again. So not, so not selected. Boom, it's selected. Now it's all lined up all professionally the way newspapers and many novels are. So that's just really nice. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to go back to my pages. Um, now I'm going to hit save because I'm, I'm kind of done with that. And uh, there we go. Now we're done. Um, saving the page, generating the thumbnail, um, keeping all my work intact. I'll wait for it to finish. 
Now, if I want to swap places with an existing page, I can do that. You can always reorder pages just by dragging and dropping them. Um, and of course, uh, any time that you want to actually preview your glossy, you can. Now, just to complete it here, I just want to make sure I put a nice little picture in there so it doesn't look like it's just barren and waiting, so I'm dragging and dropping a picture in there. Again, you know, you can move it around, you can resize it. You know, let's say I just want to focus on the girl there, I can do that. Uh, I'm not going to fool around with the text anymore other than just to move this one up here just to show you once again and emphasize the fact that you can move this around. You can, you know, resize this corner here. Just really nice. There's all kinds of really cool things you can do. Put it over here so it's not just quite right on our head. And uh, boom, now you've actually got, you know, not a bad glossy for a couple minutes worth of work. So I'm going to hit save, go back to my pages, wait for that to save for a few seconds. And when it does, the thumbnail will pop up. Um, and then anytime I really want to go and preview my glossy, I can go up here and just hit preview. And this will bring up the work that I just did. And I can go here, open the glossy. Now I've got the two facing pages. It's very short glossy, so that's all there is, as you know. Um, but you can see what the two facing pages look like, which is really nice. Um, there's nothing on the back cover yet because the glossy hasn't been actually published. Now the, the last step, of course, is to hit publish, which I'm going to show you how to do. I'm actually going to do it because I don't want to publish something that I've, I've not really polished a little bit too much to my own account. But So here's where I would name my glossy. Um, I would select a category for it. There's usually something you can find for it. Um, and then just hit publish, and boom. You've published a glossy, um, and once you, once you do that, then you want to go and click on it. It'll show up in our newest glossies area, as well as your My Glossy area. And go to the back page, and then you can grab that embed code and embed it on your site, and off you go. So those are the basics of editing a glossy and publishing it and embedding it on your site. Thanks for listening.